Uh, hello, everybody. Today I'm going to talk about technology empowering the youth, and I'm going to focus more on technology. I'm um, in my senior year in high school. I finished, I practically finished serving my 12 year in prison, and I'm trying to go, go get into university and serve for the next four years until I can get my sweet, sweet freedom. And uh, by a show of hands, who here is practically wanting to go to university? Okay, I see a couple of hands. And so, um, my entrepreneurial spirit just kind of told me to, um, is Harvard dying? Like, uh, I want to go to university, but at the same time, it's way too expensive. So I just kind of thought of, of, of the idea is, uh, I, I kind of thought of the idea that is traditional degrees and is the narrative that education being the only key to success, is it really a good idea since it's so overused, the path to education is so overwalked on? Is it really reliable anymore? And so the question pops up, and um, so to give a little background, Harvard University is the pinnacle of prestige higher education, sometimes even the American dream. Um, but what if I told you that someday Harvard Sheen could become as outdated as something like dial-up internet? Uh, we're talking a very bold prediction. At first, I thought of my topic as outright stupid, to be honest. But when you look at the statistic and you look at the psychology behind employers and how they employ people, it isn't so far-fetched, right? It is estimated that by 2025, that 85 million new, uh, jobs may be displaced or lost uh, between humans and machines, how, uh, according to the World Economic Forum. However, the same reports also suggest that 97 million new roles could emerge and are more adapted to this new task distribution. The future calls for skill sets that transcends um, role memorization because automation and AI are making normal memory jobs disappear and a uh, pretty low effort. And so it's pushed us into this realm of traditional, think uh, traditional thinking, critical thinking, creativity, and resilience. And so what does this really mean? What does the AI revolution has to do with our jobs? Most people aren't too concerned about different jobs being lost, but as da medical diagnostics, da data analysis are becoming automated, what should we do, right? We should um, focus on what matters, that is innovation, resilience, and the ability to innovate and inspire, uh, something that you just can't really download onto a chip, or maybe at least not yet in this new era. Your adaptability, creativity, and ability to learn on the fly are some real MVPs on any resume. Um, funny story, a couple months back, I uh, went on LinkedIn, uh, are anybody, uh, familiar with LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a app that's like helps you network and find job listings. It's all of the above when it comes to finding a job. Uh, I was looking for a part-time job and I saw that um, Netflix was hiring programmers and they were hiring people regardless of their degrees. So regardless of their educational background, if you pass the interview, which is really hard, you'll get in. And so these multi-billion dollar companies are going into um, or of hiring people with degrees, without a degree, is it kind of far-fetched? But when you look at the statistic in America, uh, only 27% of college grads work in a degree, uh, work in a job that is related to their major, uh, according to the Federal Reserve. So employee looks for skills. And so to match this trend, certain alternate education models are popping up every now and again to met our needs to alternate education models and, to, and help us with skills. And so um, you got courses like YouTube, edX, Coursera, this is just to name a few. As access to these courses balloon in popularity, the exclusiveness of the Ivy League in this case, but university in general deflates. And so these courses, they're not just teaching theory, they're uh, real, uh, real scenarios. And so um, another point is in the U.S., uh, $1.7 trillion are student loan debts. And so uh, grads are shackled in this debt and which can cripple their financial start. We can compare that again to these courses that cost uh, practically a fraction of the cost. And so what is the next step for students? For me, whether you, want play, uh, whether you go into business or trailblaze into tech, it really doesn't matter as long as you invest in yourself and your ability to adapt, innovate, and inspire. That's the main point. 
the whole topic of is Harvard dying, it really doesn't matter as long as you invest in yourself, invest in your ability to think, because in this climate, your ability to adapt, innovate, and inspire, and your mind is the ultimate currency. And so if you got this far, thank you for listening, and um, always invest in yourself.